What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Batania. Uh, today guys, we are going to be discussing higher tier mana manipulation. So we've discussed briefly, obviously, mana spreaders, pulse mana spreaders, and we've used sparks a little bit. Obviously, we've got them going on over here because it makes making Terra Steel much easier. It's actually a pain in the butt if you don't have sparks, but we haven't really discussed setting up mana networks or allowing for better mana storage. So we're going to be discussing all of that today, and we're going to be linking every single mana pool up in the base so that all the mana pools that do not need their mana Mana, we'll be giving the mana to ones that do need the mana and will act as backups. So this is going to require a lot of different types of sparks, spark augmentations, and we are even going to be creating a slightly larger storage in the center of our base, which will be roughly right here, maybe a little bit further over, that we'll use a mana disperser to fill up a bunch of mana pools evenly instead of just one. So, the first thing we're going to do before we even jump into that is do some enchanting, because after going and doing a little bit more mining, I am now level 34, and so I thought, you know what, let us enchant our Mana Steel Pickaxe, why not, we'll get better gear eventually, but for now we might as well, I really don't see a point in making a Terra Steel Pickaxe right now, so we're going to come in here, we're going to get out our three Lapis, and then we can come over here, now if you don't know, Pylons, which, these are uh, Natura Pylons, but... They obviously register in Wayla as mana pylons, but these act like very powerful bookshelves, and uh, two mana pylons will get you to level 30, so it's a lot nicer to make than actually making the bookshelves themselves. So we'll throw that in there, and I don't know if we're going to get a good one. It's unbreaking and some other stuff, but you know what? We'll go with it. Ooh, that was pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay, so I'll take that. I am very happy with that. Um, but yeah, so we now have this. We're good to go. And, of course, this will recharge, and we're also going to be setting up another spark that will allow us to recharge all of our stuff, basically wirelessly. So, we need to come over here and do a little bit of crafting. So, the first thing we are going to be crafting is going to be the Mana Disperser. Now, this is really cheap. It uses six Living Rock, so three on the top, three on the bottom, and two Mana Steel Ingots. And there you go. Uh, mana Distributor. Sorry, I called it a Mana Disperser. But Mana Distributor, what this allows you to do is fire... A burst of mana into this block and then it distributes it evenly among the four pools that are around it and you can see a little bit in this picture here and you'll see it a little bit better once we place it down that it's kind of got four openings one on each side so we're gonna be using that and we've got the four mana pools right here now the next thing we're gonna be doing is making a bunch of sparks and of course as always we are going to be sticking with using the white petals but it just takes two white pet or two regular petals per whatever color you want, two blaze powder, and then some gold nuggets. Now, I don't know if we actually need 14. I believe that's how many I need to cover everything in my base that does not already have a spark, and that we are going to be incorporating into this. So we're going to have that, and then we are going to come up here, and we are going to be getting out the rest of this stuff. So it's pixie dust, man of steel to go along with that, and then we've got a couple different runes. So before we actually jump into setting this up and crafting these, we are going to go over what augmentations are. So basically, sparks, what we've gone over so far is at least sparks allow you to wirelessly transport mana between two things when it is needed. So this mana pool right here has nothing in it, but when it did have stuff in it, this spark, which if we right click on it with the um, wand of the forest, you can see it connects to this spark and it basically allows for this spark to pull mana from this mana pool whenever it needs it to do the Terra Steel infusion. Now it's much faster and much easier to use than a mana spreader, which is why you use it specifically for this, because you need a lot of mana transported very fast. But not only does it allow you to do that, uh, the wireless portion is great, but you can add augmentations, and we'll be able to see those in the book if we go into the Lexica Botania and we go over to mana manipulation. Now, if you don't already know, anything that is green in here requires that you've thrown your Lexica Botania into the portal um, to Alfheim and you get it back. And of course, you know all the elven secrets. So you can see regular sparks, you already know about those. We've gone over them a little bit. Uh, mana distributors right here, if you're curious where that is. But you go over to the next page and second to last is the spark augmentation. So what this is, is basically says you can create these augments that you can add on to a spark and it will allow it to kind of work a little bit differently, interact differently with other sparks that it's attached to. So they can only be applied to sparks that lie on mana pools, so it does get a little bit annoying, and obviously sparks in and of themselves can only be applied to certain things, very minimal amounts of things, but they can only have one augment at a time. And you can go over and flip through all these and it will list them. So the dispersive augment 
which we will be using one of today, basically takes the mana in the mana pool and wirelessly gives it to a nearby player to recharge their mana items. So this will mean that we no longer need to keep a mana tablet in our inventory if we're moving around our base a lot, or it'll recharge our mana tablet for us. Then if we flip over, the dominant augment will have the spark pull mana from any non-augmented spark pools into its own until it's full, and then it'll stop. So that's pretty nice if you've got a central mana pool that you want to keep constantly full if it's something that you're using, you know, whenever you're doing, uh, I guess it would be called like alchemy, um, but whenever you're making mana steel or whenever you're making terror steel, if you want to make sure it's always full, you'd want to use the dominant augment. Next one is the recessive augment. Now this is the one we're going to be using today, but it will basically make a spark output all of the mana that the pool contains to any non-augmented or dispersive spark pools. So the dispersive one is the one that will allow us to recharge our stuff. So it'll basically completely empty it until all the other ones are full. And you know, then it'll start acting as a buffer. So when the other ones use it, it'll take the mana that gets built up in its pool again and keep refilling them constantly until it runs out. The last one is the isolated augment, which will prevent it from interacting with dominant or recessive sparks, but it can still interact with blocks through regular spark networks. Um, I don't really think we're going to be using this one at all right now, but uh, if you're curious, you can use that one. And as you can see, each one is made very similar. They're going to use pixie dust, they're going to use mana steel, and then they're going to use air, water, fire, or earth rune. So it's basically just all the simple runes to make and then you get one out. So I believe we are going to be making a couple of each that we need. We're going to be making one of the dispersive ones. So that's going to be the Rune of Water, Mana Steel Ingot, and Pixie Dust. So there we go. Spark Augment Dispersive. So we can grab that out. And the next one we're going to make is going to be seven of them. And these are going to be the Spark Augment Recessive. Now, I don't actually know what these symbols mean. They're pretty cool. Maybe they do mean something. Maybe they're just random and they're supposed to look nice. If they do mean something, you know, and you guys know, feel free to let me know because I'm sure you guys would be the ones that would know instead of me. But we're going to grab out all seven of these and we should be good to go now. So the biggest thing that we need to worry about for the current time being is that you need to be able to send from one spark to another. Now we can set up chains of sparks if we really want to. So what I'm saying is, you know, if we start over here and currently this is the main mana pool in my base, this is the one being filled by this tree farm, which is getting a huge backup. And that's why I'm doing this. Um, but basically, this pool is the one that we would put the recessive spark on and it would refill a bunch of the other ones. The only problem is it's not close to every single pool that needs it. It will be out of range of these pools over here. So if we really wanted to, you could kind of make a chain where, you know, this pool would send it to certain other ones, which could send it to certain other ones. Um, Oh gosh, that is so loud, but we're not going to be doing that. We're going to be putting it right here in the center. So this is where the center should be roughly. Uh, I want to make sure it's close enough to everything. And I believe it's in one direction, 13 blocks. So we should be fine. I think this is eight blocks from each wall and it should be able to reach over here perfectly fine. So right here should be where we send it. Maybe one over. Yeah, maybe one over here. The only problem might be that this mana spreader right here is not going to be able to uh, shoot mana over here, so we might need to move it out a little bit. But I'm not going to break this pool right now. I'm just going to put down the mana disperser or distributor. I keep saying disperser, but we'll put down the mana distributor right over here. And I'm going to get out some living rock for this just to remember where we're setting this whole thing up. So we're going to set this up over here. And what I'm going to do is check over here. So we're going to take this mana spreader and we are going to rebind it to this. Now, we should be able to see where it'll kind of fall off. Uh, is it getting... Okay, so I don't think we're going to have any issue with it losing any mana shooting over here, so it should be perfectly fine. And we'll just replace this torch like right here. But basically what I was saying is this mana pool, we can put one on every side of this. So you can see it's got all four sides. So we're going to put mana pools like this around it. Now, I guess the only problem might be that this mana pool will interfere with this. So we might only be able to do three, uh, but we could also probably move this up. So I'm going to take a shot at doing that right now. Yeah, so let's take a shot at breaking this and we'll elevate it a little bit. Now, if this doesn't work, we can just go with three for now. But I think let's try moving it up one block and then binding it to this. I think it should be able to make its way in there. And now all of these need to get rebound to this. Yep. And nope. 
yeah so there we go so those are now all bound to this uh it should be able to fire mana over there once this starts going obviously the last one when it was firing mana was from this mana pool right here and it made it straight into this one that's perfectly fine that it shot it in there it doesn't matter that was a minute amount of mana but what we can do is if you don't know this redstone setup basically made it so that when we had this pool relatively full the comparator would send out a signal and it got stronger as the mana pool filled up more and more and then it got over here and it stopped the hopper from going we're not going to worry about that anymore because we've got such a big mana pool network now so we're going to break this and these are going to start firing out like crazy we've got a ton of stuff backed up in here and honestly to catch up with all the stuff that's in there right now it's going to have a little bit of a tough time but it shouldn't be that bad so these things are going to be firing 24 7 and we should see that these mana pools assuming that this is perfectly fine uh and we'll fire over here these mana pools should all fill up from the first burst to that so i don't think this should have any issue uh yeah so let's see that they fill up yep okay so they all fill up so it's, you got to be a little bit cautious with having it shoot like directly at this mana pool at the same level because it'll hit this one first but as long as it's hitting this distributor right here it'll go into all of them now this is really nice because right now we are now firing at a single block that acts as four mana pools so you know if you can't upgrade your mana pools at all this is the way to go about doing it and what we can do now is well i guess we can leave this mana pool here for the time being we can fill up a mana tablet if we really want we can use this mana tablet and fill it up right now uh obviously that's not even going to be able to use all of it up but i kind of want to break it just because it's going to bother me so we might just come over here and grab out another one of our empty mana tablets and fill it up now the nice thing is we're not going to have to use these mana tablets anymore to move our mana because we're going to have our entire base hooked up to this wireless network at least for the time being so I think this mana tablet's full now. We'll throw the next one in there, and that'll be fine. Now, this thing is working like a charm over here. This thing is great. And I keep saying I'm going to set up the Gorma Lily, but eventually I will because we're getting a fair bit of apples from it. But as you can see, this thing should be filling up nicely, and we'll just keep an eye on these. I'll register what all their mana is right now so we can see how it goes up, but obviously it's going to go up pretty darn slow. So now it's time for us to set up the sparks, and we can break this mana pool over here now. But we're going to set up the sparks all around the base and something we have to keep in mind when we're setting these up is which we are going to add to which now i redid a lot of the base so that we'd be able to add sparks to stuff so if you recall a lot of these and i forgot to add sand to this that's going to take eight sand so we're going to grab out uh eight sand from in here but something i forgot to add to this uh when i first did it was the ability to add sparks to it and it doesn't have any mana in it right now so this shouldn't be an issue but basically uh if this mana pool was down here we wouldn't be able to add a spark to it because they go above it um but we're gonna add it now we're gonna add the augmentation and everything should be fine it was just you know a little bit of rearranging required now the annoying part is sometimes this can interfere with plants with redstone roots but i believe the orchid doesn't have redstone roots if it does we can always move it uh okay so it does this shouldn't interfere that much we can always move it if we need to uh or i can just turn off the off switch on this whole setup but or I could put the lever up there to block the lava. Either way, we'll just set it up for now like this and it should be fine. So what we're going to do is throw down a bunch of sparks on all of these. So we'll throw down a spark over here, throw down a spark over here, spark, spark, spark on these ones back here, here, and we're going to be throwing down sparks on all these guys right here, and then a spark right over here. This one ha already has a spark, not going to put a spark on those two. And then we're going to be doing a spark on this one right here. And we're even going to go back behind the wall right here. And we're going to throw a spark down on the one that's back here. Please don't let me mine into lava. Okay, so we're going to throw down a spark on the one right here. So there we go. Get that. And you know, actually, we need to leave this open for now. But basically... It looks like I had one extra spark. I don't really know where this was supposed to go. Oh, it's this one right here. Uh, so now we everything has sparks. So now they can all be hooked up using the different augmentations. So we're going to be adding the first one is dispersive. This one is going to go on. Huh, what pool do we want to put this on? We'll put it on this pool right here. So we're going to go to this spark and we are going to right click with our augmentation and now it should refill all of our mana stuff with the mana that it has in there 
So I don't know if we'll be able to even see it, but it should refill the stuff. I don't know if it fills mana tablets or just the items specifically, but with the mana that it has in here, you can see it's used it up to try and fill up our stuff again. So that's pretty darn cool. Now what we're gonna do is use these recessive augments on all the rest of the ones in the center. And what this means is they're gonna start giving their mana to all the different mana pools that are around here and add the recessive one to this one. There we go. So you can see that you can actually see the augments floating around on them. But what they should be doing is giving mana. So they're giving mana to this one. Now that's not actually what we want right now, but you can see that this whole system is running and it's probably a little bit glitchy just because of the redstone interaction. I'll fix that off camera if I have to. Uh, it's just gonna require me moving some of this stuff around or even just moving the orchid. Honestly, I could just move the orchid over one and it shouldn't be that much of an issue. Um, I might actually just do that right now. Can we do that? Oh, it's not even bound to a mana pool right now. Okay, so we're actually gonna move this over one right now. So we'll pick that up uh, and move it over. And it's probably gonna turn a bunch of blocks that are stone in the wall, but we'll turn this off right now. And yeah, it'll stop running now, perfectly fine. So we need to add a couple more recessive augments to a lot of these around here, because as you might know, a lot of these setups, including specifically this one right here, uh, will catch a lot of the excess mana that's not used, and then it'll just have it in a mana pool. So this one, we don't need either of these to have that mana. So we can add recessive augments, and they're going to start giving their mana to all the other ones that need it. So they can refill these when they need it. Then we're gonna do the same thing with this one right here, because this is, of course, it starts raining. And I don't have any way to make it stop raining. Is it nighttime right now? Can we sleep? Okay, well, we can't make it stop raining right now. Uh, but we can finish this up because we are almost done. So we've got one more recessive augment, and that is going to go on the back here. And can we see the spark, or do I need to break this block too? There we go. So we're going to add a recessive augment there. So all of the excess mana that is being caught by these will now be given to ones that can actually use it wirelessly. We don't need to worry about that. So it, I guess it's kind of going to go in order of which ones fill up first. Ooh, did I not add a recessive augment? Oh yeah, this one doesn't need a recessive augment because this one is the one that's going to be firing out. But eventually this one will fill up and it'll move on to the next one and the next one and the next one. So eventually we will add some phantom ink to these if they get to be too much of an annoyance. If you don't already know, phantom ink will allow it to kind of, uh, you know, not actually have to see it because these can get a little bit, uh, I mean, I don't mind the way they look, but they can get a little bit annoying when you have a ton of them and we kind of do in the center of our base right now. So we can make them disappear eventually if we want to. But I think that's going to be it for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully you will have a lot of luck setting up your mana network around your base. Now, obviously, this mana network has a very big buffer uh, in the very center here that is going to be nice because I AFK a lot, as you can see by how much wood had built up in there over the last, like, two days. But, uh, yeah, if you guys enjoyed the video, found it entertaining or informative in any way, please feel free to give it a like. It does help me out a lot. I hope you guys had an amazing Christmas day. I spent it with family and friends, ate a lot of food. Got a nice nap in in the middle of the day, had, you know, as much fun as you possibly could and relaxed. And now we have another 364 days until the next Christmas. But again, thanks for watching, guys, and I will talk to you later.